Mertens on Chelsea's radar. Atletico make final Cavani offer. There's a bittersweet derby for United. The transfer roundup and today's power rankings all coming up in the next few minutes as I'm your host, Matt Froelich. You are the one footballers and this is the Daily News. First off, and Chelsea and Frank Lampard's search for a striker has taken them to Italy where Napoli's forward Dries Mertens is apparently on their hit list. Now, the 32-year-old is still a phenomenal player and the fact that his contract runs out in the summer means that Chelsea could sign him for as little as £5 million. I mean, I mean, 5 million is a ridiculous bargain for any sort of player, but for a player like Mertens with Champions League experience, real quality, and definitely not really on the decline at the moment, this would be an unbelievable deal. Tammy Abraham could learn so much from him, and with it looking like Olivier Giroud is bound to leave the club, whether it's to Tottenham, Inter Milan, or anywhere else, Dries Mertens would definitely, definitely fill that gap. On top of this, Chelsea do still have Champions League football to offer, as do Napoli, although they face a considerably tougher task against Barcelona. And I just think that Mertens would really fit in well. His agent has also been saying that it's everyone's dream to play in the Premier League. So what better chance at 32 years old and you've pretty much got a clean run at forcing the transfer. But moving on though, and to Edison Cavani, another player in his early 30s, who's also looking to move from PSG to Atletico Madrid. Apparently, Atleti made their final offer of around 18 million euros for the Uruguay forward, but PSG is still pretty reluctant to sell. This is because they're still fighting on all four fronts. They've got two French Cups, the French League, which they're pretty much going to win with or without Cavani, and the Champions League to face. If PSG season goes anything like the last two seasons, Neymar will get injured and they'll be out of the Champions League regardless of what Edison Cavani can pull out of his hat. This means that in an ideal world, Cavani would be leaving for Atletico because it looks like him and his family have been desperate to move to Madrid for the last few years. If he isn't let go, well, it looks like he's going to be pretty pissed off. He's been asked to be left out of the last four match days and doesn't really look to be getting back into the squad anytime soon. Sounds like it would be best for all parties to let him go. But as I said, 18 million is the final offer from Atleti. Although at this point, money really doesn't matter to PSG. Moving on though, and away from the transfer news ever so slightly, and to last night's football, where it was a bittersweet derby for Ole Gunnar Solskjaer and Manchester United. They won 1-0 at the Etihad. He's become only the third manager behind Klopp and Mourinho to win twice against Pep Guardiola on his home patch. They also became the second side of the season behind Wolves to keep a clean sheet as the away side at the Etihad. But still... Manchester City are going through to the Carabao Cup final. It's the third season in a row they've managed to do it. Only Nottingham Forest and Liverpool have managed to do this before. On the night, they lost 1-0. A fine to Manny Matic volley before he got sent off. Meant that Solskjaer's side did win, but he still said at the end they need another striker. Someone who needs to break their nose to score. Sorry, someone who wants to break their nose to score. That's probably not what you're going to bring up in an interview for a new striker. Are you willing to break your nose? But regardless of this, with Marcus Rashford out of the side, United did look a little blunt in attack. But the same could be said for Manchester City, who instead of shooting, decided to pass the ball around before eventually being tackled. Anyway, Guardiola's side are through and do have a realistic chance of picking up the first English trophy of the season as they take on Aston Villa. It's been Pep Guardiola's trophy for the last two seasons, and all honesty, I can really see him making it three in a row. So next up, we've got a quick roundup of the rest of the day's transfer news, where Chicho Piontek is moving from AC Milan to Hertha Berlin for around 27 million euros. The 85 million pound bid from Barcelona for Everton's Richarlison was talked of as being absolute nonsense. Both Carl Walker-Peters and Danny Rose are set to leave Spurs on loan deals to Southampton and Newcastle respectively, and West Ham have completed the signing of Slavia Prague's Thomas Suchek. So here we are, the One Football Power Rankings, where we look at some of the best Best players around Europe and assimilate them in some sort of list for you based on the one football power ranking system. We take a look at the club's last five games, how many of them the player has played, and we're also taking into account the domestic league and the Champions League slash Europa League. So the domestic cups do not count. Before we reveal the winner this week, let's take a quick look at who's in for numbers 10 till 6. Number 10 is Kevin De Bruyne, Julian Branson at number 9, Kylian Mbappe drops to 8 as Ronaldo drops to 7, with Thiago pulling the strings in at number 6. In at number five, it's Dortmund captain Marco Royce. He's helping his side go for a late, late and unexpected title push by throwing together a whole load of assists. He's got one in his last five games and a couple of goals to boot. 
That is one in each of his last five games. Along with the likes of Erling Haaland and Jane Sancho, who's going to pop up in a minute, Dortmund really are on fire. Oh, and if you're asking about where Erling Braut Haaland is, he's only played two games at the moment, so hasn't quite got the average rating of someone who's played five. But I'm pretty sure with one good performance at the weekend, he may find himself sneaking in, especially if he keeps banging in the goals. Moving into number four, and it's Adama Traore, a fantastic season for Wolves, and he's actually assisted three of their last four Premier League goals. We've seen him in scintillating form, so much so, he may not even be at Wolves come the end of the season. So to number three now, and we spoke about Marco Royce's team out earlier, it is Jadon Sancho. Incredible form. He's got a goal and an assist in each of the last four games from the last five. Ridiculous. Utterly ridiculous. Whenever he touches the ball, I've got a theory. It just seems that every single cross is finished by his teammates. You need... Oh, <clears throat> You only need to look at him once to realise he really is the real deal and definitely going to be moving, if he does, for over £100 million. So here we are at the final two. You know how it goes. I'll set out a case for both before finally revealing who is number one in the power rankings this week. First up, and we've got the title holder from the last three or four weeks, it's Neymar. Still doing the business, so much so I'm actually forgetting about all his off-the-field antics because he's doing so well on the pitch. Another two goals in the tune of victory over Lille saw his side extend their lead further at the top of League R. But of course, the real test will come when the Champions League comes rolling around again. As for Neymar, well, he's got seven goals and four assists in the last five games, and yeah, he's just on fire. But the challenger to him this week, Robert Lewandowski. The Bayern Munich forward is at the heart of everything good they do, and in the last five games, during which Bayern have won all five, he's either scored or assisted. He's been in such, such good form that Bayern are pretty much putting off buying a new striker because, well, they could just rely on the pole to be finding the back of the net so consistently for probably the next couple of years. So with that said and done with the challenger and the title holder laid out, I can now reveal that the winner is Neymar yet again. Unbelievable footballing ability and he's showing it week in, week out. So there you have it. Let me know your thoughts on the power rankings and the rest of today's daily news in the comments section below. Whilst you're there, smash the like button and click here or here to check out all of the other videos we've got going on on OneFootball. But until next time, I'll see you guys later.